Hello and welcome back to another out of spec motoring EV road trip video. We have done so much here in Europe. Just to remind you, we started with the Opel Maca E road trip from Munich to Austria and back. We then collected this car and took this and the Volkswagen ID3 from Munich to the Nürburgring, which was an amazing quick blast as fast as we could down the Autobahns. We then took this car from the Nürburgring up here to Gothenburg, where we are right now. We then <laughs> jumped here at the train station on a bus and shot our epic Norwegian tour, the full lap of Norway, which is just truly insanely beautiful. We just returned our Tesla Model Y to Marcus Beal. We are now on the final leg of our European road trip where we are gonna jump in the Porsche Taycan Turbo Cross Turismo. And it's a good thing we have this car because we are in a bit of a hurry. We just arrived back to Sweden from Norway. We got a little bit distracted by the beauty and kind of stayed there a day longer than we should have. We have to go from here in Gothenburg, it's like 4 p.m., to the Nürburgring, pick up the ID3, drop this car off in Stuttgart, and then get back to Munich for flights first thing Monday morning. It's currently Saturday evening. This is a lot of driving. Uh, I don't know what our plan is, but I know it's going to involve a lot of high speed and high charging. So it's a good thing we have the Porsche Taycan because in terms of EVs that can go quickly, it doesn't get much faster than this particular car. This is the Porsche Taycan Turbo again. This is a brand new Cross Turismo model, which means it's the hatchback wagon. Now, if you've watched our previous video, you know all of this, but of course, some people will just watch this video and hadn't catched, or I should say, hadn't caught the previous videos. Alyssa's just coming up now, and we have to jump in and hit the road, but maybe we should do a quick lap of Gothenburg before we leave. We're in a bit of a hurry, but that doesn't mean we can't stay up late to do some exploring. So let's explore Gothenburg for the next, I don't know, we'll give ourselves 30 minutes and then we have to hit the road. <laughs> Go down through Denmark, you know, across the bridge to Copenhagen. Go what was that? I want to go through Denmark. You want to take the ferry back? The ferry? Yeah, you have to choose Denmark or the ferry. And the ferry might go to Denmark. I don't even know. <laughs> I think we still have to go to Denmark either way. New e-tron here in Gothenburg. Anyway, I'm glad the car is fine. I'm glad it's safe. It's sat here for, I want to say four days, something like this. So uh, looking good. We're at 50% state of charge. I think I left it with 51. Uh, perfect. So let's maybe get a little bit of food, do something Gothenburg-y, and then we'll hit the road. You can see here there's chargers in the parking lot and we could have opted to plug in the Porsche and have a full battery. But again, we were gone for a few days. So that meant the Porsche would have had to sit with a full battery pack, which isn't great for it. And also, um, yeah, it would stop those people from charging. So I'm glad we didn't do this. Look at this, tons of EVs here. Here comes a Honda E, one of my favorites. We just tested this car over on out of spec reviews. So make sure you take a look at that. Uh, I assume this is going to tell us our parking bill, which is going to be astronomical. Thank you for parking here. Us, uh, I don't know how we pay. All right. See you later. Maybe it was free parking. Who knows? Anyway, uh, let's go explore Gothenburg a little bit. And it's a city I've always wanted to go to. And we really only spent about 20 minutes here a couple days ago, didn't we? Yeah. So we definitely have to come back and do some more Nordic stuff because it's really awesome up here for sure. Guys, take a look over here to the right. You'll see all these buses are plugged in. These are all electric buses that are charging on type two right now. Gotta love that. Europe's so far ahead of the US in many ways when it comes to electrification. From infrastructure to general knowledge on how to use the chargers, I'm really just blown away by the Norwegian's ability to uh, you know, just as a whole, as a society, understand an EV. I mean, when you talk to your general American off the street, they're like, oh, first off, don't they all catch on fire? <laughs> that's where, that's our starting point. Uh, secondly, it's, you know, how far does it go? How do I plug it in? How fast does it charge? But charging speed doesn't matter. So we noticed a ton of fast charging parks all throughout Norway, um, but no one uses them. 
they just charge it home and I think the distances are so short and the roadway speeds are so low that we saw like less than 10 cars DC fast charging the entire time we were in Europe. So I guess we can't go this way. So we'll just do another loop around. Good thing this car handles well and has rear steering. We'll exit this way here and we'll find another way downtown. Uh, there is a 50 kilowatt uh, DC fast charging station that the Porsche pulled up downtown. We're gonna navigate to it. My experience is most of these city chargers are usually just full. There's always a car on them, but uh, we'll, we'll try it. And uh, if we're gonna explore downtown a little bit, we may as well have the car work for us and charge up a little bit. Well, unfortunately we can't find the charger. It looks like it's inside this building behind us. So yeah, I don't know what's up with that, but anyway, we'll just go downtown, see if we find anything. Alyssa wants to get Ikea for dinner, get some Swedish meatballs, <laughs> <laughs> which I think would be really funny, but I'd much rather get like a legit Swedish dinner, even though I, that would be a good bit for the video is like, oh, we're at Ikea getting Swedish meatballs like every Swede does. At least that would be our funny American impression. A line of people here waiting to go in somewhere. Nice electric Volvo bus in front of us. It's a long one. It is a long <laughs> one. Damn, they're gonna hit the tire. Wow, that was impressive. This guy's ripping it through the city too. <laughs> this is awesome. Absolutely shredding into oncoming traffic. There's another one. And there's a tram, we have to stop. <laughs> no, it's the same bus. Oh, it's a bus? I thought it was a tram that it was giving us the warning for. So in Norway, you can just drive in the bus lanes, apparently. Here, I think we have to go on this side. Yes, because the person behind us did the same thing. So confirmation, we're doing it correctly. We don't know how to read any of these signs. We're just going. <laughs> and we have parked in the exact same parking spot that we did last time we were here. And we are sandwiched between two Model S's, the tram's going by. It's a pretty hard city to drive around just because I don't really understand half the signs. So we know that there was a lot of activity down this road and we just ate at that one awesome Thai restaurant. Really good place. Uh, we're not going to do that again. We'll try something new, but we'll go down there, find something to do. Let me just hold my finger here. That should lock the car. There we go. And off we go then. We found the best Swedish meatballs in uh, Gothenburg and they're pretty much all gone. I forgot to film because they've been so good. And after an awesome tour of downtown Gothenburg, we spent way too much time down there, but honestly, great city. So fun to walk around, really nice views. Are you looking for an unlock on the car? Let me walk closer to it. There you go, now it's unlocked. Um, we really have loved it, but this is what I love about Sweden right here. Volvo V90 wagon, Volvo V60 wagon, Volvo XC40, Ugh, the best. Here is Hamburg Center. We have not selected a hotel yet, but let's take a look at the route as to the car that, what am I trying to say? The route the car wants to take. So last time we went, here, let's click on full trip view. Last time we did this exact way but what i think we're gonna do is go this way down the e47 and take the ferry right here and um yeah this should be quite interesting so we'll go to copenhagen cross the water and then we will go this way it sounds like the trunk didn't want to close there we may have overstuffed it but um yeah it should be good then tomorrow we're gonna go from hamburg all the way over to the nurburgring down here somewhere over in this area. Then we're gonna go down to Stuttgart. This is big distances. And then we're gonna go to Munich either that morning or that evening. We'll have to play it by ear, but a lot of driving ahead. So I hope the Taycan is ready. So the car has planned out our charging stops, but again, we're not going that way. It wants to take a different ferry down there. I mean, we could do this and then go down through Denmark, but I think what I'd like to do is just head down uh, this way, the E6 and then go across this ferry here. I'm sure this one's cool too, but I'd rather drive during the daytime. So we'll do this ferry at night here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a late night into Hamburg. It's projecting a 1 a.m. arrival. But these are the things we have to do to get the content. So let's go here and reset all of our trip stuff. Do, 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 trip, reset everything. 
reset all. There we go. All of this is so inaccurate because we were just absolutely blasting when we uh, <laughs> shot the last video with this car. Top speed work. Not much of that today, but tomorrow for sure. Into drive and individual mode I have configured to go full low, but then everything else in comfort because this car looks best when it's fully slammed to the ground, I think. Off we go down the parking garage then. Saying goodbye to all the Volvos in Sweden. We'll have to charge up at uh, maybe that same Ionity station we did on the outside of town. We have about 46% state of charge remaining. And uh, that's plenty to warm up the battery pack. Ready to get it to get it DC fast charging here pretty soon. Cool little trick. You can always put the car in Sport Plus to do a couple launch controls and that'll pre-warm up the battery pack. And welcome to the Ionity station. We've been to this station together. We're sort of doing a similar trip backwards, not the same exact one. Let me pull the Porsche charging card out of my uh, pocket here. Now this car does support plug and charge on Ionity. The thing is because this is a media vehicle, it's actually not set up. So um, if you were an owner of this car, you would just be able to come in, plug in, and start charging. But because this is a Porsche company car, uh, there's a whole bunch of processes. It's not set up this way. So they give you a backup card and that's what I'm using to activate the chargers. You can see an ID3 over at the 50 kilowatt charger. That doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you use these? Maybe cost is different. It's the only thing I can think of. But uh, yeah, charging up here, we've plugged in at about 22% state of charge. Uh, because we had the car automatically doing our charge station routing, uh, it warmed the battery up almost to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's actually the warmest I've ever seen a Porsche precondition for a fast charger. And that's really warm for this. So I'm excited to see our charging speed. I can hear and feel the cable cooling kicking on here. So then here comes another Taycan rolling in, looking nice. So let's see. Oh, rear steer on that one too. Let's see what this says when it connects. Lovely 4S from Sweden. Yeah, here we are ramping up here. 21% state of charge, 80 kilowatts, 100, blowing past 100. That's not good. 150, 200. <laughs> this is the best part about Taycan. It just rips up to 245, it'll sit here a little bit and then it'll go right up to 270 in my experience. Perfect conditions for DC fast charging battery packs at the perfect state of charge and um, nice and warm of course. And the exterior temperatures are quite chilly, which is good. So that should help keep things cool when we're pumping in 255 kilowatts into the battery pack. I think I'm gonna run into the little shop over here. There's a McDonald's, there's a little roadway station. Get some waters and snacks for the road because we have another six or seven hours to do tonight and the sun's about to go down. It's a Red Bull kind of night, folks. <laughs> here we go, big Red Bull. Yeah, Excedrin and Red Bull. That's how we're gonna make it through. <laughs> They got Celsius. Oh, do you like Celsius? Those are uh, better, healthier energy drinks. Nah, I'm a Red Bull. They give you wings, <laughs> baby.
We are still having the same issue here in Europe where we can't figure out if water is still or carbonated. It's been a real problem, but with a nice man in there told us the word to look for. It starts with a K. Anyway, the, still the, K word. the station oh, here has filled up. We spoke to this man with the ID3. He thought he was at the fastest charger. He didn't know. He's like, oh, well, it took me an hour to get it to plug in and charge. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm like, that sounds like a good plan. I think it's a rental car. This is now charged up to 58% doing 190 kilowatts literally in 10 minutes. So I think we're good to go would be my guess. And uh, let's throw the stuff in the car, check the route planner and hit the road. It shows the next charging stop is in about 150 kilometers. We have about 200 kilometers of indicated range on the gasometer. That means if we keep driving the way we have been driving, that's how far we'll be able to go. We are now down to 180 kilowatts, a big taper here. <laughs> it's sarcasm, of course. Let's unplug and hit the road and uh, we'll figure out chargers. The best thing about driving in Europe is there are high power DC fast chargers pretty much off of every exit, especially here in the Nordics, in the Scandinavian countries. So unplugging, hitting the road and blasting south. And welcome to an Ionity station. We've arrived with 17% state of charge, 92 degrees Fahrenheit on the battery pack. To me, that just seems perfect. Um, take a look at this too, the door cards here. Light up Tycon Turbo, nice. Haven't been to this station before, so let's get it activated. I have my Porsche charging service. That Tycon was the one that blew past us on the highway. This is a different type of Ionity station. I've never actually tried to use it before. Tapping this, come on. It says, I don't know what this means. There we go. It's doing something. Maybe it wants me to plug in first. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be recognizing the card. Swipe the charging port. This is all going off the Porsche charging route planner. I'm doing a little testing with this because I think it's tuned really well to get us in here at a pretty good state of charge, get us to rip up the charging speeds and then get us to go. Okay, plugged in, that's what it's doing. Now it says tap. Wait, it didn't even ask me to tap anything. <laughs> Maybe it already had, I don't know. This is an interesting screen. Also, <laughs> that's such a funny way to say help. I'm literally putting the charging card. There we go. I hope it recognized it. <laughs> Jelp. <laughs> Polestar 2 and Tycon here, of course. Ionity stations can get filled up quick here. The fact that they've only put four in these locations, well, not sure that's enough. Also, this handshake process does take a while. We were just road tripping Tesla Model Y, which uses CCS. And this thing rockets a handshake in like 15 seconds and then you're charging. And so to me, that's just, you know, the gold standard at this point. So I don't know what that means. I think that's a good thing. This has now gone pink. Wow, ramping up quick here, 100 kilowatts. What are we gonna get up to initially? 132, that doesn't seem great. Maybe we hit a ledge. AMG out for a rip, racing a uh, wagon. Gotta love that. Love car culture. These are made by Tritium. Nice. But I believe uh, we're only getting 130 kilowatts. So what's up there? 
That doesn't make much sense. Maybe they're only 150 kilowatt units. Not sure. We'll see, but uh, we'll let this thing charge up until we get up to, I don't know, 30, 40% and we'll head out and hit the next one. So I've learned that these are just 150 kilowatt chargers. Just had a great conversation with these folks over here in the Taycan. They live in Norway. The guy's a massive car enthusiast and was driving Audi RS5 for a while. Went for a drive in a Taycan, was like, I have to buy one. Now he has this. They've road tripped it to Italy and back. They've been to Germany and back. He was maxing it out on the Autobahns. He's just so in love with this Taycan 4S and uh, Polestar 2 ripping away here in silence. Uh, great to see car enthusiasts going electric. He and I both agree it'd be great to have some sort of manual transmission for the weekends to really get the soul out once in a while. But for everyday driving, uh, he is just in love with this Taycan. He said he just ripped it up the Stelvio Pass and with rear steering, it was moving around. I love the enthusiasm. Uh, great to see people really getting into passionate driving with electric. And right now the Taycan's probably the only EV that can invoke that kind of passion, at least from my side. Uh, Model 3 is a bit sterile. Look, I drive one, I own one. It's an amazing car on paper, but it doesn't invoke the real spirit of motoring like Taycan can. Anyway, we are charged up to 50 something percent. I don't think we should sit here at 150 kilowatts much longer. Let's unplug. That was a great conversation. Literally spent no time. Really nice to meet these folks. Um, yeah, they've owned a bunch of electric cars in Norway. And now we are heading off to the next one. Uh, cruising through the night here in Sweden. So to stop charging, all I'm gonna do is click this little button here. We're gonna give it a couple seconds for cable cooling to stop. A little light should come on indicating, there it goes, that it's safe to unplug. Maybe not, I thought it did. There it goes. Now we can put, whoa. Now we can put the charger away back in its handle. I think these are beautifully designed stations. I just wish they were 250 kilowatts. I don't, maybe they're earlier, I'm not sure, but. Um, Yep, we'll say goodbye. Nice to meet you. See you later. <laughs> and uh, heading out now. Alyssa is dead asleep. <laughs> Let's head down south. And welcome to, I think, our only and last charging stop in Denmark. We just crossed over the border. There's an e-crafter here. Oh no, this is a man electric something or other. This is cool. Should we peek at the charging speeds? It won't let us. Yeah, it says tap the payment card. Yeah, it doesn't show us. Man, I wanted to see how fast that was charging. Um, cool, so let's tap here. Let's do the same thing, plug it in. Now the car said this was a 350 kilowatt unit. I'm honestly not sure. They look to be the same units as the one from last stop that were 150s. But the thing is, uh, we're at 22% state of charge. This is actually the last fast charger on this route, which is why 
both the car and I agreed that this was better to stop early and top up here. Everything else between here and Germany is 50 kilowatts on this route. And on a battery pack that's 86 kilowatt hour usable or so, yeah, that's just not gonna cut it, is it? So um, love to see this company, SFT, using a full battery electric vehicle. And uh, that's pretty awesome. We're getting this thing plugged in. We'll let it charge up. Let's see if it's a 350 kilowatt charger or a 200 or 150. What am I trying to say? It's been a long day of driving. <laughs> Man, these really are beautiful chargers when they load up. And yet this one's gotta be a 350 kilowatt. Rocketing past 200. Look at this, all the way up to 246, 247. Granted, we're at 25% state of charge, but it's definitely the right move to stop and charge up here. And uh, we'll do a pretty high state of charge. We might even be able to make it to Hamburg with this charge remaining. And then the hotel that we've booked for the night has car chargers. The big question is though, are they gonna be available? We can call the front desk and ask them to maybe reserve us a spot, but you never truly know. So we need to leave a little bit in the tank just in case we need to DC fast charge in the morning. We'll see, but look at this thing, just pegged at 245 kilowatts. Man, <laughs> and creeping up, that's awesome. <laughs> and I totally somehow missed this. There's a whole bunch of Ionity stations too, just across the way. How did I not see these? <laughs> I don't know, like I said, been a long day, but that's pretty amazing. This is the biggest Ionity station I've been to. Two, four, six, eight, ten 10 stall Ionity. Now we're talking folks. And here's what our trip looks like. We're gonna charge up and then head on down that way. It's 314 kilometers. I think if we charge up here, we're you know just sitting at 100 kilowatts right now. Not amazing, but it's 50 kilowatt chargers all the way down there anyway. We're still doing more than double. May as well just sit here and take in the juice. And uh, yeah, you can see the car wants to charge two times. I think we're gonna overrule that decision. We'll just charge up here, which is very unlike me because I usually like to stop and charge, but I know for sure that's a 50 kilowatt station and we definitely don't want to charge just before the nighttime because they have a charger at the hotel. So we'll just charge up a little extra here. Polestar rolled up, by the way, Polestar is everywhere up here, makes sense. And uh, yeah, the van's still kicking it. That's awesome. And we are now charged up to 90%, still doing 95 kilowatts, just dropping here. That was pretty insane. What I think the car was actually doing, now I have to call Porsche and confirm this, was uh, the car had a set target to say, hey, if we leave here at 86%, we can make it. And I think it didn't pull max power for that long to keep itself cool later on in the pack. So I think this car has a dynamic charging curve to get you to the end state of charge fastest, which means not necessarily running at peak, overheating itself and then having to drop to run all the fans, but just kept it basically pegged at 150, then 100 kilowatts, then 95, but then held that pretty deep. Again, 95 kilowatts or so at 90% state of charge is pretty, pretty good i have to say anyway we're dropping hard now so let's stop let's uh unplug this thing i'm gonna click this little button right here and we are gonna head towards the ferry to hamburg apparently the ferry runs 24 hours a day they have two ships every hour so we might have to wait around a little bit won't be an issue we have about a 2 30 a.m projected arrival into Hamburg tonight. And then tomorrow, that's all the high speed stuff. That's where we get to showcase the real true awesome driving of the Taycan.
just a quick stop to use the restroom and turns out there's a charger here. And since we are gonna arrive at our hotel really low, well, let's just plug in. Also surprising, uh, let's see, this is why the car didn't show it. It's not a Porsche approved charger, but let's see if it's on my plug surfing card. Um, okay, it, did it brick? Let's see, checking this one, that one works. Let's plug it in, nice. So yeah, this is the thing. Some chargers work on some cards, some chargers work on others. Please go in the port, there we go. And uh, yeah, we'll charge up, maybe we'll gain a couple kilowatt hours while I go run and use the restroom. And well, unfortunately it doesn't look like we gained anything. Zero kilowatt hours and it's showing up red. The Model S is charging though. This is why we need a CCS adapter in the US. That's okay, we probably don't even need to charge. Let's just head out, unlock the car, and we'll be off to the next one. We are arriving to the ferry. We literally showed up and we're just rolling right on. Perfect timing. Uh, apparently the ferry runs twice every hour, every 24 hours. Uh, what I'm gonna do is raise the car up into normal mode. Range mode keeps it on the ground and I worry with like the undulations getting on the boat. Um, we can also quickly go full height by clicking gravel instantly and it'll just pff, go up high. So that's awesome. Uh, love having adaptive air suspension, especially with this lip spoiler up front. The ferry, by the way, fully electric that we're gonna be on. Can't wait for this, this is so neat. So an electric car on an electric ferry on an electric road trip. Now we've been on some electric ferries this trip uh, in Norway, but now this is like a legit one. This one is like tractor trailers, tons of cars. You should have seen how big this parking lot is. Uh, this is a mega ferry and um, yeah, like just 18 wheelers rolling on and off this thing like it's nothing. So I'm excited to take a look at the charging ports, take a look at the stuff around the ferry. I don't know if we're allowed to leave our cars. I think we are. So I'm going to do some exploring as soon as we park. And uh, this is where we're going here, just so you can see. So let's go north up. Here's this. So we are in the bottom tip of the eastern part of Denmark. And then we're gonna cross this crossing here. It takes about 45 minutes over here. It was about almost $100 to take the ferry, I think. Something like this, if I might correct, if my calculations are correct, I think it was like $90 US for two people in the car to go across. A lot of money for sure. Um, would have been cheaper to do it the other way, but at least this way we can see a cool ferry, maybe get a little quick nap in, and then it's not far to get to uh, Hamburg once we uh, dock in Germany. Looking forward to this. Awesome to see this. Obviously we're not using much of the space. Really freaking cool. Woo. See if we can see anything up this way. So here we are pulling away, but I have sad news. It's not electric. The guy was like, it's fully electric at the gate. Maybe he thought we were talking about the Taycan. <laughs> I don't know. Check that out though. This thing's freaking big. There's another ferry port here too. Wow. Perfect night. Little lounge. I'm the only one up here. <laughs> so cool. There we go. Leaving Denmark. Man, they're efficient. This thing rolled up. We drove on and I ran upstairs and we are underway. 
Sounds like an airport over there. Cool. So here's the boat that we're on, and I found out it is uh, a hybrid. So you can see diesel and electric, all the details. So it's a hybrid ship. That's pretty neat. Thank you for all the COVID stuff. Next slide, come on. After a super smooth and relaxing ferry ride, we find this just on the other side. We had a quick blast of de-restricted Autobahn just to heat everything back up, plugging in 150 kilowatt charger. I figured we'll plug in for five, 10 minutes, something like this. I might rest my eyes just for a couple minutes and then we'll be off to Hamburg. And this is a long night, definitely stretching it, but have to do it because tomorrow's gonna be epic epic day tomorrow so let's make sure we're charging just plugged in of course ccs handshake taking its sweet time 720 volts on the pack not charging right up to 150 kilowatts right there gotta love that and uh sweet we'll charge up i mean it says we had like a 30 kilometer deficit to get to the hotel so we'll just charge up for again five ten minutes something like this and if we charge up any extra, then we'll just burn it off as speed. have arrived to our hotel. I've just plugged the car in again for level two charging. The uh, cables aren't on the units here in Europe. You have to bring your own. Tesla chargers though, those have their own cables. I think Tesla's doing it right. That's the right decision. I think this is probably the wrong decision. I think we do it better in the US by providing our own cables. But nice hotel, this looks pretty sick. I don't know why no other cars are in the parking lot. The parking garage on the other side was full, but no cars were here charging. So I don't know. Either way, we made it here with 10% state of charge. It's a 10 and a half kilowatt charger. So it says it'll be charged fully by 1130 AM. Hopefully by then we'll be on the road. So we'll just let this thing charge up, get as much juice as we can throughout the night. 
but I'm ready for bed. How about you? Yeah. All right. Good night, guys. Good morning, and man, am I feeling refreshed. It's about 11 a.m., so we slept in. The car I just monitored on the Porsche app is fully charged. Honestly, the Porsche app's awesome. It tells you in exact kilowatts in real time how fast it's charging. The only other car that I can think that does that so accurately and so quickly is Tesla. So um, I really think Porsche has put a lot of effort into making sure their cars are connected and it works. I'm pretty impressed, I have to say. So the Taycan's at 100% state of charge. We are heading off to the Nürburgring now. Should be a blast. We have to really use this car for what it's intended for, which means big speed and big charging power. We, this is where <laughs> we are on a really tight schedule. We honestly should have left about two hours ago, but I was dead asleep through my alarms. You know, it's good to sleep in once in a while. We're gonna meet some friends for a barbecue tonight just outside of Stuttgart. Uh, but that means we have to blast it to the Nürburgring as fast as we can. Pick up the Volkswagen ID3 that we left there from our last adventures. Maybe try and squeeze in a lap. Alyssa really wants to do a lap in the Porsche. Um, I, I don't know if we'll have time for this really. And then we have to jump <laughs> back on the road in both cars to Stuttgart. We're gonna leave this car in Stuttgart tonight and then we have to take the ID3 over to Munich. So. Man, it's gonna be one hell of an adventure, and let me throw the bags in it. Let's waste no more time. Let's uh, let's go. 100% state of charge. I've selected an Ionity station about 170 kilometers away from here, and uh, this should be able to charge us up at again 270 kilowatts. We're gonna heat up the battery on the way, drive it hard, and then plug it in. Sometimes the the, dist the gaps are huge between the cars. Now in traffic like this where there's a lot of people, I don't think it's smart to just go maxed out the whole time. But driving 200, 230, something like this is this is fine. People are used to it. And the, you know, everyone kind of keeps their eye in the mirror. Um, you know, no one's nearly behind us. So if we just stay in the left and kind of put some distance between us and the cars on the side, that's totally fine. Um, of course, you do want to drive in the right most lane possible in Germany under most driving scenarios, but for something like this, it's great. Now here we are, wide open throttle, deploying all of that acceleration. You can see this thing just wafts up to speed. We have a nice C-Class pulling in front of us, so just using the ceramics to slow us down. Uh, now driving it like that, wide open throttle, full regen, that's not the most efficient way. But kind of maintaining 200, 220, 230 kilometers an hour, I think is really the sweet spot for this car from an efficiency versus charging perspective. Honestly, if you charge it right and you're not hard on the throttle, you can pretty much just go maxed out and that's the fastest way to charge it. So our goal today is gonna be to pull into charging stations with the least amount of energy possible, charge up to 50 or 60% state of charge, and then rip. Uh, if you watched a couple of videos ago when we took this car from the Nürburgring up this way, we were actually overheating the car. And part of that was due to my driving style. It was unplug the charger, wide open throttle. I think today I'm gonna take a more balanced approach of, especially as we get closer to a high power DC fast charger, I'll drive a little bit more gently, let the battery cool down so we can get more time at 270 kilowatts, and then we'll gently ease us up to um, you know, max speed or high speed, I should say. It's busy here today, so you know who knows how quickly we can go. But here in the north of Germany, the roads 
are pretty open for the most part, especially compared to the, the southern part of Germany. And people do drive quick. I mean, we just got passed by some guy going way too fast. So, um, you know, I think we're taking a reasonable approach here when it comes to driving. We are optimizing what this car is built for, which is high speed over long distance. Look, I won't go full throttle. I'll just kind of roll into it, for example. Just move over one lane. We'll just get it up to, I don't know, 200. Oh, let's just max it out for the video, shall we? I get carried away a little bit. 252 kilometers, 256, and it's just unbelievably smooth and serene when you do 160 miles an hour. It's really, truly insane. And of course, everyone's got their fast Audi wagons here that we just passed. And, um, you know, they, these cars are just as capable, so people shred. It's awesome. Anyway, that's our plan. We uh, have a charging station at 158 kilometers. We have 191 kilometers projected. Uh, this is mostly Autobahn prediction here, so that's pretty accurate because we've been driving pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, plug in there as low as possible. driving in the Taycan. We're back in Germany. We are not on de-restricted Autobahn, so we're taking it easy, but I wanted to show you this neat feature. Take a look here. The car thinks we're going to get to the charger with 13% state of charge, but that's because I'm in range mode. Normally, I've been doing all of our high-speed driving in my individual profile, so when I transfer it over there, take a look here at the screen, 1%. It's so smart. It knows how I'm going to be driving depending on the driving mode. That's pretty good technology. We're pulling off the highway early, not sticking to our plan to go fast because the road looks nearly to be closed up ahead. So we veered off the exit because Alyssa's like, I'm hungry and we want to stop and get some snacks. So um, literally went on the Porsche nav system here, found a charger right off the exit. So we may as well charge up, get some snacks, some breakfast, and then we'll go sit in traffic. Yeah, so the purpose of this video is showing the high speed, high charging rates not going well. But tonight will be a different story. Yeah, it'll it, get there. It'll get there. A little slow start here. Just hang with us, you know? <laughs> Take a look at this truck full of Teslas here on the right. Nice to see. We are rolling up here to this DC fast charger. It's an ENBV, ENBW um, fast charger. It looks like it's in use though with a Volkswagen ID4. So that's not a good situation, is it? Yeah, oh wait. Oh wait, there's two cars there. There's a Citroen uh, electric car and an ID4 both charging up. Uh, and so uh, that means it's only 175 kilowatts instead of 300, but that's okay. We're already at 50% state of charge. So I guess we'll just park over here. That sucks. Uh, that's the problem. Don't just put one station in, come on. 
man. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, it gets expensive. Let's see if there's any others in the lot. No. There's fuel, parking. It gets expensive. What was that, Alyssa? You said it gets expensive. Yeah, to put in more chargers. All right, well, I guess we'll just hang out over here and uh, run in and get some snacks. And if we're not able to charge, no big deal. But I thought it would be nice to charge and stop, have the car do something while we're sitting around. Well, even after our little shopping trip, they're uh, still there, just plugged in, standing around. Well, that's that. Back on the road. Mm -hmm.